In this episode of my Gato Engine water shader mini tutorial series, we're adding a refraction effect to our water. To do this, we'll make adjustments to our screen texture UV to incorporate our wave normal maps. As always, you can grab the source files for this and all my Gato tutorials on my Patreon. When light enters and exits a water's surface, it doesn't just come back the same way that it goes in. The direction of light changes its speed and direction when traveling through water, so objects below the water appear refracted. The surface normal of the water creates different entry points and therefore the refraction effect. To recreate the actual refraction would take a lot more math and computational power, so games often fake it by just adjusting the screen texture UV that is projected onto the water plane. Building off of our water shader from the last episode, we adjust our water transparency default to zero. This will still work later on, but the effect is gonna look better I feel at zero and we add a new uniform for our refraction strength with a default set to 0.5. Higher values are gonna create more refraction and you may want a lesser value than 0.5. Then after we create our normal map values by adding maps A and B, we add these lines. Here, we're taking our normal map value and offsetting it by multiplying it by two and subtracting our max strength value. This is gonna keep the normals from shifting oddly on the screen UV. Then we mix our mesh normals with our normal map. This is gonna come in handy when we add vertex displacement. We then get a vector two value for our new distorted UV by taking the screen UV value, subtracting the XY of our refraction normal and multiplying by our refraction strength. To use this new distorted UV, we need to redo our texture samples for our depth and screen textures. We'll get two depth textures, one for our regular clean UV and one for our new distorted UV. We'll also get our screen texture with our new distorted UVs. You'll see that our refraction is already working, but we need to start blending everything together so we can incorporate Bayer's Law and the depth and everything else that we've already done. After we have set our depth color, we add a new Vector3 refraction texture and then mix between the depth color and our refraction texture for our final color using the water transparency multiplied by our depth blend as the alpha. You can already shift between the water transparency and other settings and see the refraction effect, but we have a clear visual artifact that we need to fix. You'll notice a bleeding effect on objects that are above the water, but are still getting refracted. To fix this, we need to check if the pixel in our depth is in front of our water plane depth. Back in our shader, we'll make use of our clean depth map that we created earlier. We get a new NDC value or normalized device coordinate, then get our pixel depth and view space, that is from the distance of the camera, and get our linear depth value. This linear depth value will tell us if the pixel is in front of our mesh vertex position and therefore above the water. If the linear depth is near zero, we want to use our undistorted depth map. If it isn't, we use our distorted one. Then we do the same check for our refraction texture. If the depth pixel is in front, we use our undistorted screen texture, and if it's behind, we use the refracted texture. This clears up most of the bleeding, except for a small sliver that should be unnoticeable for most. You should now have a customizable refraction effect for your water and still be able to change transparency, depth, and color.